What are you doing? You want some bread? I thought you were keto. Hello, Willow Davis, how's it going? So it's uh, it's Wednesday today. Happy, happy Wednesday. Wildo Wednesday. What does Wildo Wednesday mean? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but I like the sound of it and I kind of want to make it a thing. So, so let, let's figure out what that's going to be. I meant to make a cooking video for Tuesday this week, but uh, that didn't happen. I just, I don't know, I got behind on things. So I figured uh, I might as well do that today. And if I... If I get time, God, we're, it is crunch time now. Uh, I would like to uh, hit up my P.O. box. I believe there is something there waiting for me if I can ever get around to getting there. I should have some downtime with this stuff that I'm going to be making today. I want to make some bread, which I've only done once before, and it turned out good, so I'm, I'm attempting it again. And then I also want to make some seitan, uh, the flour chicken, you may recall that I attempted in a previous video, the one where I also cooked a bunch of carrots. Um, I like kinda got it in that one, but I found out the flour that I was using is, was not like very good for the recipe. So for the flour, the flour chicken, the seitan, which I've made a couple different ways now, I'm now using bread flour. It has, I guess, a higher protein content. It's a lot easier to get that gluten out of it. Um, I, I use like some cheap bleached all-purpose flour uh, the, a couple of times before and I just there's just not enough like gluten in it to actually have it form anything and it all just dissolves and like goes down the drain which is probably not good so we got <laughs> we got bread flour to make the flour chicken type deal situation and then for the for the bread I have unbleached all-purpose flour. Why not use the bread flour for the bread? I'm not sure. Let me know, but uh, <laughs> that's just the way I'm doing it. I, I don't know why I have to be so different about this stuff, but to figure out how to make bread, I kind of like looked at like a couple of different things and then like figured out what I wanted to do based on those other recipes. Uh, I started out by watching something like Homemade Easy Bread Making by Deep South Texas. It was a YouTube video. That's not the exact title. But uh, I got like kind of some of the basic ideas from that and then I just did my own thing. I'm not going to be following that exactly. The ingredients, the ingredients, all that I need for the bread is the flour. It's going to be like three and a half cups of that. I'll go over it again. One packet of yeast, water and a little i got some dark brown sugar to uh start up the yeast and that's it yeah that's it oh and and salt of course uh and then for the seitan chicken whatever you want to call it um you need the bread flour and water and then seasoning uh, and then i'm going to cook it in some vegetable stock and that's it it's all very very simple, it's just based on flour and water, everything. Hi, first thing I'm gonna do is start the yeast going. You know, you gotta like, I don't know, awaken it or something. Got about a quarter cup of warm water, about a quarter teaspoon of brown sugar there. And I'm just gonna put this in. Some, some active dry yeast. Yeah, that is exactly what it says to do here, and I'm gonna leave it for five minutes after I give it a little stir, I guess. Get it going. Okay, five minutes for this. I'm, in the meantime, I'll get the, um, I'll get the seitan started. Just need, actually there's no measurements for this because I just kind of put in a bunch of flour into a bowl and then mix in water until it is the right consistency. So let's get started on that. I used like half of this five pound bag. There you go. Okay, now I made sure the water is cold and I'm just gonna start, start working it in until it gets to a nice, I want it to be like pretty dry still, but not like cracking when I'm like kneading it. And so you just want to get it into a solid ball. Okay, 
I'm sorry if this is uh, difficult to follow, being that I'm doing two flour-based recipe things at once. I mean, you weren't really coming to me for the for the end-all recipe to these things, were you? We're just here to chill out, right? I feel like YouTube's in this weird place where, um, I don't know, like certain, like, high energy content is kind of out. I feel like no one has like the, the attention span anymore, if you know what I mean, maybe because of TikTok or something, but like, it seems like people come to YouTube to, to listen to someone who they enjoy, just do something and talk about it for a while. Like just long, longer videos of someone just discussing some topic or doing something like building some type of thing or something like that. Is that your experience? What do you watch? What do you, you start, you open up YouTube, maybe, maybe you're at work, maybe you're on your lunch break or something, maybe in the morning while you're getting ready. What do you, what do you watch? I asked uh, some of my viewers on Twitch, a lot of them said like true crime stuff where like those people just talk about like unsolved murders or whatever. Seems to be a popular one lately. I think I might have put too much water. It's very goopy right now. Actually, no, I just gotta work it more. A little more flour. There we go, this is a little more like it. Okay, now we got this. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just going to put it back into the bowl I was working in with some water at the bottom and then cover it in water. And we're gonna let that sit for an hour. Okay, now the yeast is done, look at that. I'm gonna put it into, I, I, I know I don't really have any working uh, <laughs> mixing bowls, I'm using a bunch of pans. Uh, a cup and a quarter of water. You, okay, there you go. And then going into that will be three and a half cups of flour. I'm gonna stir it in with uh, this this stick. I think it'll work best. Okay, now that it's all mixed into a mixed into a ball here, I'm gonna start kneading it for like at least five more minutes. All right, now that I've beat this thing up for a while, we're gonna let it rest for three minutes and then start reforming it. Just to recap, we got, this is the bread flour with, made into a ball and we're letting that soak for an hour and this is gonna become the seitan. This is <laughs> the all-purpose flour with the yeast in it and that's gonna be our bread eventually. You know, don't get it all mixed up. And then, actually, after we touch that up again, we should have time to maybe hit up the P.O. Box. That would be pretty cool. That would, that would be pretty nice. Make it a nice Wildo Wednesday, am I right? What are you doing? Need help with anything? Hi. You want some bread? I thought you were keto. I forgot to add the salt. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna still do it. There's a lot of kneading that still has to be done, so I'm, I'm still gonna do it. Um. I don't know how much. Let's just, let's just get some on there and I'll work it in. Okay, I worked it in. Gonna let it rest for a couple more minutes before I form it up again. Um, it's not it's not really gonna be as good, probably, because you're definitely supposed to have like the salt kind of like dissolve into the water a little bit. Uh, but it'll be fine. 
just you don't forget. Okay. Been a few minutes. Gonna get this over here. Just kind of roll it up a little bit into a nice shape. I don't know. Kind of like a tuck. Give a little tuck in at the bottom. Okay, got it into a nice shape there. Gonna leave it on this tray. Okay. There you go. And then I'm putting a slightly damp paper towel over it. Cover it. And leave it for an hour. One hour. All right. Who's coming with me to the P.O. box? Ollie? You wanna go to the P.O. box? Well, well, we've got, we've got a package here. Can't wait to get home and open it. Ooh. Wonder what it could be. All right, you ready to head home? Very good, very good. All right, we're back. Let's go ahead and see what we got in here from the P.O. box. It's like a regular old Wildo Wednesday. You can see Holly in the back there. Um, what do you think, What, what it, in your opinion, when you hear Wildo Wednesday, what do you think of? Should I make like a, should I make like an email address for fan mail or something? Also, I was thinking about, sorry, I'm sure this is very loud and cr crinkly and stuff. I'm thinking about having like a, some kind of long form video for Thursdays. Is there any like topics you'd be interested in hearing me talk about or like stories to tell or something like that? Let me know, or if, if that's a bad idea, let me know. So we got, I think it said it was from Bed Bath & Beyond, whatever we got here. Oh, oh my God, how fitting. How fitting. <laughs> it's a mixing bowl set. What the hell? How'd you, how'd you know? Is this, uh, is this from who I think it is? Is there any indication? Uh, it hurt me that you do not have mixing bowls. Why you hurt? These are the ones I have and they're awesome. Cooking good health, my dude. Trash. Okay, so yes, this is from Trash Ketchum NYC. Wow, they sure do look great. Definitely, definitely a lot easier to work with than the, like, pots and pans that I'm using. It's like curved bottom. I, everything that I use is like squared off and it's like so hard to get like any like dough or whatever I'm mixing out of the corners. Oh my god. One and a half quart, three quart, and five quart su sizes included. Non-slip bottom stabilizes bowl while mixing. Wide lip and spout for easy pouring. And dishwasher safe. That's a big one right there. I love using the dishwasher. Oh my god, it's got a little spout too. I, I realized it's very washed out on the screen. Got a little spout. Thanks so much, Trash. I really appreciate it. Uh, shame that I didn't open it before starting my uh, my cooking. <laughs> actually, actually, I still have to um, wash the dough for the seitan. Uh, so this will be a great this will be a great option for that instead of that really annoying, very high walled pot. Give it a quick wash. Okay, I got my fresh new mixing bowl here, ready with some cold water. Um, this has been soaking in here for about an hour. Make sure it's not stuck to the bottom. Let's give it a little, give it a little lift there. I will start working on that in a second. Meanwhile, this has been rising for uh, just under an hour. By the time I finish washing that other one, it'll definitely been an hour. Looking looking very nice it's grown quite a bit i don't know if you could tell or not but anyway let's go ahead and get started on this hey if you made it this far into the video i want to know what's your uh, favorite type of bread i like a sourdough usually i could try to make a sourdough i think it takes a couple of days to get the uh to get the uh, yeast or bacteria going or whatever so i don't know <laughs> that sounds like more of a challenge i also like a nice like ciabatta or like a french bread uh I'm, I'm i'm a bread fan i like some pumpernickel oh what oh there's so many different kinds so focaccia anyway 
You can go ahead and get this on out of here. I mean, try. And now, ooh, it's very soft. It's very soft, you can see it drooping. We're gonna wash it, which I messed up a few times trying to do this with a less good flour. Cause it would just, I would just keep washing it and washing it and it would just break apart and dissolve into nothing. So I've been, well, first of all, the flour, the, the good flour, the bread flour makes all the difference here. But uh, I'm also in washing it and like kneading it in the water. I'm trying not to like break it apart into a bunch of pieces. You're not like obliterating it. You're just trying to like, you're just constantly working the starch out of it, like letting the st starch dissolve and trying to keep the uh, gluten intact. So this is gonna take a while. And I'm just like folding it over and putting it back together, trying to not have just like pieces just like flying off of it, you know? Cause you're trying to keep that, I don't know, you're trying to keep the like gluten protein like bonded together and whatever. I'm not trying to get a bunch of little bits that are just gonna like pour out when I go to change the water. I'm gonna keep doing this until the water is very, very opaque and then change it out and then the same thing again and change it out and change it out and change it out until we have a, a stretchy, spongy material left. This is going to reduce in size quite a bit as all the uh, starch dissolves out of it. Okay, at this point, the, the water is very full of starch. I'm gonna see if I can gather up the dough enough that I can just dump it out. If not, I'll just have to kind of hold it back while I pour most of the water out. At a certain point, it reaches kind of like, reaches this critical moment where it's just like, oh God, this whole thing's falling apart. I don't know if this is gonna work for me. Uh, but as long as I found with the bread flour, uh, you can manage to get everything pulled back together again with with the cheap all-purpose bleached flour that I got before I found that it was just it would just dissolve into nothing All right, so it's kind of it's it's really at that point where like it's starting to fall apart So I'm just gonna pour out what I can while like holding back. It should all sink to the bottom the gluten so it's not that bad and I've heard you can save this water and turn it into crepes. I'll uh, try to remember to link the video for that down below. There's actually a video on just making the flour seitan uh, that I found really helpful. And, and then they also say at the end of it how you can turn this starch water into crepes. And they look pretty good, but uh, I've got enough going on here right now that I'm just uh, dumping it for now. And so you wanna make sure you're not losing chunks of the, uh, the dough that's in there, the stringy, sponginess yeah so i'm gonna keep working this in here there's still some like starch water left in there but i really uh i don't i don't want to accidentally pour out some of what i actually want so okay i just wanted to show that i've passed that kind of like apex of everything feeling like it's falling apart as like the there's still starch in there but like the gluten starting to bind together but it's like in pieces and now we're at this point where it's mostly just the protein left like most of the starch has gotten out of it so now it's starting to like you know form into a actual ball again it's like you put the ball in the water, start washing it, it all falls apart into a bunch of pieces, and then eventually, if you keep doing it, it comes back together again, and that's that's where we're at. Still needs some more washing until the uh, the water starts looking clearer, and then then that's where that's when we know we're done with the washing. Okay, so we're at the point where uh, the water's running pretty clear. We have this kind of very overly chewed gum kind of vibe. It's spongy and a bit stretchy. Um, so now it is time to take the water out. And let me say, this mixing bowl has made the process much, much easier. Thank you so much, Trash. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that like that. No water in it. Let me give this like a, a squeeze. 
get some excess moisture out of there. Now, throwing that in there, and we have to season it. Oh, you, are you tilted? Did something move? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna use salt. I don't have any quantities for these things. It's gonna be more than you think. Because of course the uh, material is, is very plain. Garlic powder, some ground cumin, some allspice. That was a lot, that's fine, I'm fine with that. And I'm doing some turmeric, give it, give it some interesting color. And then just kind of gently work this in. Make sure you don't get like clumps of the spices anywhere. I'm gonna give it a good knead. Okay, so that's pretty thoroughly mixed in. I'm gonna try and get this into a nice like solid ball because this is like, uh, we're gonna let it sit for an hour and it, I guess it kind of like reforms the, uh, the kind of structure of the gluten a little bit right now. It's very, ooh, sorry, I got a storage warning and had to delete some stuff. I don't know what I got cut off on, but so I'm basically just trying to form it up into a good shape right now because after this, we're gonna let it rest for an hour and I guess kind of everything kind of forms back together. You know, right now it's a little lumpy and wants to like fall apart, but the next step after that is uh, just kind of like stretching it out and cutting it into like a braid and stuff. So I wanna make sure there's not any weird like folds or anything in this so I can do that with ease. Okay, this is done. Gotta let it rest for an hour. We'll plop it in here and uh, throw a lid on it or something. It doesn't dry out. Okay, that worked. Okay, now onto the bread, which has been rising for an hour. See how we uh, did here. Ooh, stuck a little bit. Probably should have taken this off in between. That's a shame. We've got to punch it down anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. Okay, yeah, I'm not horribly concerned about that because if you had made um, enough dough for multiple loaves of bread, this would be the time you separate them anyway, so I think ripping a little piece off isn't too big of a deal. Now I am just going to punch it down. And reform it into a ball. Okay, flour on there, and let that let that sit for another 15 and then punch it down again. Some of these steps might not be necessary and I, I wouldn't know. I don't really know what each thing does. I know you punch it down so there's not all these big air bubbles in it with the yeast. I don't know how many times, I, I, I just heard two. Okay, it is time for the next one. Uh, it's risen up a little bit. I mean, it's only been 15 minutes, so not time. Uh, I'm just gonna punch it down. One more time, I'm literally like editing the first part of this video while I'm finishing this stuff, trying to try to get it out reasonably timed. Put a little flour on the counter here. There you go. Now, let me get, let me get the flour and stuff off of this because I'm going to bake it on this. I don't have a, um, I don't have like a, a bread pan, but it would be an interesting thing to try at some point. I just want it to get a good shape again. I'm not doing too much to it. Now that is the last time I am reshaping this. Next step is to just get it on here and uh, let it rest for an hour again, and then it's uh, then it's going in the oven. Okay, now hopefully this rises over the next hour to the appropriate size, then it is time to bake. Hey, it's a bit later. Um, the seitan has been resting and now it is time for the most fun part of the uh, seitan process, in my opinion. 
here it is. Solid block after the amount of time. Let me prop you up a little bit better. Okay, so now all I have to do is just stretch out a little bit into like a long rectangle or just long thing. You can see it's like definitely stretchier now, like wants to hold together. You can see like the uh, the kind of lines in it, the texture. I'm, I'm making sure not to rip it or anything. Just stretch it out because this is like this is the last bit of it here. I can't go like reforming it now. Now I'm going to cut it long ways into three strips, but leaving it connected at one end. Just cutting it into thirds and I have to like, this is like a little serrated knife. I'm just kind of running it along, making sure it all separates because it wants to hold together. There we go. One more. Okay, so now this, this step is what's going to make it nice and like kind of shreddable and whatnot. So, just have a long M or an E or whatever you want it to be. And I'm gonna braid it. You know how to braid it, right? You just take one that's on the outside, put it between the other two, then go to the opposite side, put it between the other two, you know, you know. You probably know better than I do. Okay, there we go, a nice, nice little rope there. I probably should have stretched it out and tried to get a couple more braids in there, but this is fine. And I'm just kind of reforming the, the end of it there, where all the ends meet. Let it relax. Just kind of make sure you don't rip it. But I'm stretching out a little bit more because then I'm also just once going to try and tie it into a knot. Maybe I probably should have braided it more. Get a little twist too, maybe. I don't want to push it too hard. Okay, I think we can get one little knot in here. Whew. Oh my god. There we go, barely, barely got a knot in it. Try to flatten out a little bit. It's very tall, I don't want it, I don't want it to be quite so thick. Try to flatten it out a little bit. Okay, this is, this is it right here. Next step is, well you could actually just kind of, you could wrap this in plastic and refrigerate it if you want, if you want to save it for later or whatever. I'm going to fry this in a pan with some oil. All right, I've got some olive oil heating up in the pan. I'd say definitely make sure that the oil is heated up before you do this, because you want it to like get, get fried and crispy on the sides and not just like absorb all the oil, so. That's probably gonna splatter, because I let it go. I get, let it get a little, maybe a little too warm, but um, I'm gonna grab a spatula. Oh, okay, yeah, this is, Still quite uh quite thick here, but uh, usually want to get usually just want to get browned on this side. Then I'll flip it over, get it browned on the other side, and then that's when I'll add the vegetable stock and you kind of just let it simmer for a long time. So it's just like you know, it just gets all cooked up and everything's nice and flavorful and whatever else. And, oh, I don't remember if I said this, but uh. You know, make sure the oil's hot because you don't you want it to like get crispy, you don't want it to just like absorb the oil. Oh boy. I need two hands for this. Okay, there we go. That is definitely how it's supposed to be looking. Very cool, let that brown for a little bit, then after that I'll put this in. At that point, if you want to throw in some like uh, or maybe like right now if you want to throw in some onion and garlic or something like that, that's on you. If you feel like making it a whole thing. 
Looking very nice. Very excited about it. We're nearing an hour on the bread here, I think. It's not looking as quite as um, risen up as it was that one time, or like the, not as much as last time. Hopefully I didn't ruin it too much by adding in the salt at a weird time, but um, I don't know, we'll see. And also it, has to, uh, it still has to go in the oven and bake, so maybe. Also, I think it's a little colder in here today. Maybe I'll wait a little longer. I don't know. I'm not a bread guy. <laughs> Okay, this is looking good now. I took it off the heat, that's the one that's hot. I took it off there for a second so it would hopefully not splatter so much when I go to put the uh, vegetable stock in because there is still some oil in there. So let me stand back a bit. Kind of like have it half covered, I think is good, it'll, it'll absorb a pretty good amount of it. And then I'll put it back on the heat, cover it up. And um, they say like, well, like put it in for like 20 minutes, let it simmer. So um, I'm just gonna keep checking on it every couple of minutes, give it a flip in like 10 minutes, just see how it's doing, see how much of the broth it's absorbing up and stuff. Check the texture of it and then, uh, then it will be done. Very cool. And let me say, I did, um, I successfully one time, instead of frying it and uh, sauteing it, I uh, took it and I put it in the oven, just like kind of lightly greased a baking pan and put it in the oven and um, like 400 degrees or whatever, flipped it halfway through when it started looking like I could use it. And then I ended up turning it into a nice, like uh, I was, I was having it act like, um, corned beef for St. Patrick's Day. I had a couple of different ingredients in there to make it taste a little bit more likely. And it worked out pretty well. Uh, you could like slice it and everything. It was kind of a different vibe from uh, from what we're doing here. And so I'd recommend that as well. Try it for yourself. Hey, hello. So it's been going for a little bit. I'm gonna just give it a little flip, just, just for the hell of it, make sure it's all even simmering. And I have the oven currently Preheat it. I need to. I need like something else here. <laughs> Help me out. There we go. Ooh, very nice. Uh, I need. I turned up the heat a little bit. It was like simmering before, and then I took the lid off, and it stopped. I'm gonna let the rest of it go without the lid on it. Maybe uh, it'll even reduce down some of the um, broth, and it'll make a nice sauce. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, you just. You just keep on living there. It smells wonderful. Okay, how are you doing? You almost ready over here? I, put, <laughs> I don't know why I do this. No one said to do this. I put a little little score in it. I like the way it comes out. I like the way it looks. Uh, this is looking pretty good. I think it's ready to go. Uh, let me see how the oven's doing. We're at three, a little over 300, so almost there, almost there. I can pop this and go get up to 400 degrees. I don't know if I said that already. 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know how long to bake it for, maybe like 40 minutes, but I'm going to just keep checking on it until it looks like it's uh, totally done and the outside's all nice and brown and everything. I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, this is uh, just about there. Let me grab a, a spatula. Let me see how we did here. It's looking pretty good, pretty good. Gotta go ahead and try to, you know, shred this a little bit. If possible, we'll see what it does. Oh yeah. Oh, it's doing it. It's doing the thing. It is doing that thing. Try not to scratch the uh, pan, of course. That's shredding off nice. Okay, that is all set. I'm think I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit, just kinda soak up the rest of the broth there. Then I'll try it, it's looking very very good in my opinion. Let's see what this is doing. It's getting there. It is. It's getting there. I think it's done. I think it's done. I think it's done. Oh my god. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Hold on. I think. I think that's done. It's pretty. Pretty solid. 
All right. Who wants some? I think it's looking pretty good. Hopefully it's not too like dense or something. Looks pretty good. Oh man. Little, little ASMR bread or no? <laughs> Let me see. Let me see how it came out. really good <laughs> oh my god i'm telling you there's nothing nothing quite like the experience <laughs> making your own bread you got to try it sometime oh my god it's better than it was last time definitely last time i remembered the salt but i didn't put in enough mm. oh my god mm. Wow, okay. Bread was really good. Time to try a little bit of this. I guess I'll save it, see if maybe we can uh, make a dinner out of it, but let me try this now. Also great, also great. Everything came out good. Oh my God. Everything gets a massive thumbs up for me. You know I had to try. Oh my god, I'm telling you, if you've never made it, if you've never eaten your own fresh bread, you gotta try it. It's a very unique experience. 10 out of 10s, all around, to everyone. Anyway, that's it. I made my bread. I made my seitan. Now I'm tired. <laughs> that is all I've done today, is just make this stuff. <laughs> okay, anyway. Thanks so much for watching. Smash like on this video. Be sure to leave some comments, it all helps. If you wanna see more cooking stuff, I would love to do more. It's gotta, it's gotta do well with the YouTube algorithm. So uh, make sure you share it with a friend, how about that? And I'll see you next time. Hello Davis, out.